So I'm recording this as a demo over top of a painting that I had already started. And I'm going back in after it's dry to refine some of the shapes. So I, I'm trying to darken, kind of create a darker cloud shape over and above, kind of at the top there. Often with painting skies and clouds, this is the way that I work. I will go in over a painting after it's dry and move things around, refine some shapes and things like that. So And I'm basing my changes on a sketch that I did of this kind of exact view uh, that I started the painting from that sketch as well. But I got to a point in the painting, the initial lay-in, where I just felt like I didn't want to move things around anymore at the time. So I needed to make changes, but I, I knew I would make those changes, but I waited for it to dry first and then came back into it. So I'm kind of going back to, to the sketch that I originally had made. This was a view overlooking parts of the White Mountains in New Hampshire in a recent camping trip that we went on as a family this summer. So I'm just kind of using that sketch as a reference. I'm not using any photographic reference. Um, so many of my paintings, the designs are based upon sketches that I've done in person or sketches sometimes that I've done from photographs just to get the design that I'm looking for and feel like I'm, you know, able to kind of replicate some of the design elements in a painting, even if it's not replicating the colors that I actually saw, but some of those elements are included as well. So this, I put some description, some descriptive words next to the sketch so that I would know kind of what I was wanting the painting to represent and what I wanted it to say. And so it was kind of this moody sky, kind of a rainy day, but there was this glowing kind of peachy glow <laughs> um, from some of the clouds at the horizon. So that's kind of the, the, the idea of the painting, I guess. That's, that was the main idea of the painting. But all of the individual shapes that make up those clouds, I'm kind of just creating a little bit based from the sketch and a little bit just from what feels right in the painting itself. So I kind of, I feel that it's really important to recognize that the painting itself needs to stand on its own, separate from any photo reference or sketch that I've made beforehand, because what the viewer is going to see is the, the painting, the actual finished product. And so I don't try to get, I don't get too hung up on trying to replicate anything that I'm looking at, that kind of thing. I just want the painting to stand on its own. So often as I get further into a painting, I will kind of stop even looking at my reference a little bit in order to just focus on what the painting itself needs in terms of design, maybe shapes need to be moved around, maybe things need to be refined, maybe I need to cut, carve back into something, that kind of thing. So you'll kind of see me move a lot of the shapes around um, and play with the values a little bit um, to create some of the nuance that you often see in skies. Anyway, I think the skies are so fun to paint because they are, they are so abstract. Um, and so I really enjoy that. Um, I guess that aspect of painting skies, the abstract quality of them. So, so 
So here I'm kind of doing what I said before, refining some of those shapes, carving in, like carving back in with some of the sky color to define some of the shapes. I never start a painting by outlining the shapes that I'm going to be painting um, or outlining the design. I really start with blocks of color. Um, I'll have lots of other demos to show how I begin a painting. But I'll just start with the main shapes, the, the larger shapes and often the darker values is kind of how I begin my paintings. And then I'll work towards more refinement as I go along. But I really do enjoy starting out a painting with blocks of color and not getting hung up on outlining anything or defining any of the shapes too closely until I kind of build the painting up all together. Um, I don't really, I don't really enjoy feeling like any one part of a painting is finished before other areas. I kind of like the painting to all arrive together at the same place. So there is a lot of moving things around throughout the course of a painting for me to find that equilibrium that I'm looking for in a painting, um, and that kind of thing. So And the initial block end of this probably could have been considered a finished painting, but I wasn't really happy with some of the surface quality of it, but also some of the design. I felt like, I just felt like certain things needed to be emphasized a little bit more or uh, refined a little bit more. So, but as I go in, in the subsequent layer, I want to be conscious that I'm not, um, going in with too heavy of a hand. And so I, you'll see that I leave some areas untouched, unfinished, unrefined. I don't, I'm not necessarily going in to overhaul the entire piece, but I want, sometimes I am when I'm going back into a painting, but with this one, I, I felt like it was pretty close. And so I'm really just going in with a little bit of subtlety, I guess, a, a lighter touch. The sky is pretty drastic in the changes that I make in it. But even with the sky, it still has the semblance of the shapes and the values and the tones. And so I'm, and I'm also maintaining a lot of that in the foreground, but I want to emphasize some areas more than others. Anyway, so you'll see me kind of, I guess with a light touch, go in and change things and alter things um, to create some of that nuance and interest that I was feeling like the original was lacking. So that's kind of what I'm trying to do as I go back in. Um, I started out with a bigger brush and then I'm working now back into some of those detailed, those detailed parts of the sky with a smaller brush. And I will often pretty quickly move to smaller brushes in my, in my work. This isn't a really huge painting. It's an eight by 14, I want to say. But um, I, f I, I enjoy the smaller brushes because it allows for a lot of that scumbling that I like to do. And um, I don't, I, I like to work with a lot of detail to create some nuance and texture on the surface, but I don't necessarily, I'm not necessarily looking to render things really closely with a small brush or anything. So I'm not using my small brushes to create a lot of refined detail. It's more to allow me to kind of skip along the paint, skip across the surface of the painting with a lighter touch, I guess, in some ways. And so I enjoy the smaller brushes for that reason. I feel like they help me to be able to do that, to kind of have that light touch and skip around the painting and not feel like I'm being too heavy with, with my hand. Um, to create too much blanket flat color. So sometimes with a larger brush, you end up kind of overhauling a large area of a painting. Uh, and so this helps me to, I guess, be a little more deliberate in my application of the paint. I feel that all paintings are made up of hundreds, if not thousands of micro decisions. Um, and that those decisions can feel laborious sometimes, but I think 
so often they start to feel more intuitive as you, you know, as you progress in your practice with, with painting. So I, I just think that using that smaller brush sometimes helps me to, I guess, move a little more intuitively and bounce around a painting a little bit more. So you'll see me, like I said before, move a lot of things around here. I'm using a really light touch to do some blending and scumbling of, of the paint that's already on the surface uh, to create a soft uh, effect in the um, transitions between values and things like that, which you always do see in skies. You know, you see a lot of soft edges. There's not a lot of hard edges in skies. Often the hard edges that you'll see in a sky um, are going to come at the edges of clouds and things like that if you have very defined cloud shapes. But often in skies, and what I love about painting skies, I guess, is a lot of that, those soft edges that you don't have. There's a lot that's left up to the imagination, to the interpretation of the viewer. Um, I don't, I don't want to feel like I'm outlining anything in a sky or rendering too closely anything in the sky. So I do like, I like that abstract quality of leaving things kind of untouched a little bit in the sky, moving things around. I don't want to lose that luminous, that luminous quality that, that I wanted to feel at the horizon line there, but I also didn't want it to feel too overbearing for the rest of the piece. I wanted it to feel kind of subtle. So I'm kind of going in and trying to play with those values a little bit and some of the, the warmth and the coolness of, of that tone at the horizon. You'll see me use my fingers for some blending. I do that sometimes when I feel like I don't want to get a brush to do it, <laughs> or it's just something that I can do quicker, I guess. And so, you know, you can kind of see some of my thought process a little bit as I'm going through with this piece, just when I'm observing the painting and step, I'm, you know, stepping back maybe a little bit or squinting and looking at it just at the overall design of it, just to kind of feel how, how it's, how the painting's feeling for me, I guess, if it feels like it's balanced, um, if, if it feels like the eye is continually able to move around the painting and not having any one spot where it's getting stuck or where the eye just goes off of the painting and doesn't have a, an entry point again, like a re-entry point. So I'm kind of always thinking about those things when I'm looking at design. I'm not, I'm not ever really thinking in terms of like technical, um, explanations of design and things like that. I'm, I'm just looking at the, those elements like the balance, the movement, um, the mood a little bit. So those are all things I'm kind of thinking about as I'm looking at a painting and seeing if I feel like it's ready or finished or close or something. And at this point, I'm, I think that there, it's like, Sometimes I can't put my finger on what it is, so it takes me some time to step back and look at it and squint. Sometimes I have to let it sit, come back to it with fresh eyes in another session. Um, but I do find that if I stand with a painting long enough and I, I kind of give it, give it some time to percolate and some time to, like I, if I'm not impatient with the piece, then I'm, I'm often able to kind of determine what, what it needs, even in the session that I'm currently in with it and 
which I really, I like the immediacy of getting into a painting like wet on wet. And so I do enjoy, I, do, I guess I do enjoy that experience. And so if I'm patient enough, I'm usually grateful for the time that I spend with a painting. Um, and often looking back at a piece and doing a voiceover, watching myself paint, I'll even question some of my decisions that I'm making at the, in the moment in real time. And so it's kind of interesting for me to look back and to see what the choices were that I was making because I'm not always, I don't always remember those things until I'm looking back at it. Uh, or I might see how, if I was doing it again, painting it again, maybe how I would do something a little different or whatever. So it's interesting for me to, to see those things. There's a lot of ways to finish a painting. And I always say with every, every decision that you make leads to a different painting. And so that's one thing that is very exciting to me about painting again and again and again. And just thinking of it as little pages out of my sketchbook and each painting is going to be something unique and different. And this painting turned out this way, but the next time I do a painting, it'll be something different, you know, or even if I did the same motif, it would, it would just be a different painting and it would be great just because you, you get that chance to try new things and try something different with each, each time, each opportunity at the easel. And I, I like to keep some broken color, so I try not to over blend anything too much, but I also don't want there to be such broken color that it feels inconsistent. So that's where it ends today.